I don't want his name on the roll call. It's probably Eden. We should still have about something. Okay, okay. I'll just send the house. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, uh, welcome to the City of Homestead City Hall 2011-2012. Uh, this is the public hearing for the budget, a special call meeting uh, here on September 6th, uh, 2011 at 5.40 in the afternoon. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Burgess? Here. Councilwoman Lobo? Here. Councilman Maldonado? Here. Councilman Shelley? Here. Councilman Williams? Present. Vice Mayor Woolman? Here. Mayor Bateman? Here. Uh, any additions, deletions, referrals? Yes, no, thank you. Okay, tonight uh, we'll, we'll be adopting the proposed millage rate for the Avalon tax and a tentative budget. We will conduct a public hearing tonight on both the proposed millage rate and the tentative budget. In order to facilitate public input, we will read both items and hear from city staff and then open up for one joint public hearing. Uh, Mr. City, uh, city Attorney, um, at this time, will you please read the resolution? First item is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, establishing a proposed millage rate of Avalorum taxation for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2011 and ending to the September 30th, 2012. The second item is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, adopting the budgets for several funds and departments of the city for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2011, ending September 30th, 2012, providing for repealer, separability, and effective date. Thank you, sir. Uh, staff, do we have a presentation? Mayor, Council, I'm going to uh, walk around a little bit, just some of the screens I can see and some of them I can't, so I'm going to uh, forgive me. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about first, and that is something new this year, and that is the budget book is done before uh, the uh, budget hearing. And we wanted to do that for you so that you and the public would have an opportunity to review the budget before adoption with the final uh, hearing and adoption would be on the 21st. Uh, this document is online, so the public has an opportunity to review it. It is a draft, so there will be some nits and nats in there that we're still working uh, in the department to uh, clean up, but they wanted to make sure on the number side everything was, was there for you. And then uh, secondly, on the back of the book, at, uh, we'll, you'll see capital improvement plan. And what we'd like to do is come back similar to the CRA in the future, in the fall, uh, with a more comprehensive document. Typically, in, in, in many cities, you have the budget book and then you have a separate capital improvement plan uh, document, which will kind of tie in a lot of these projects in a more detailed way with funding sources. So at some point, we'll come back to you with the document and also to work with you to set some priorities of 
you know, as the staff goes through the process of really looking through the city uh, head to toe, uh, all four corners, figuring out really what are our infrastructure needs, what are your priorities, and then kind of figure out, again, how ambitious do you want to be and where would those funding sources come from. So that's kind of a process thing. Also, in order to get this book to you uh, early, which is substantially different than how you've done uh, business in the past, I'm told, uh, finance really had to revamp their system and they spent a tremendous amount of hours making it happen so that you have it. So I want to publicly thank them. They were here, you know, all hours of the night to, to make this happen. Kate Carano also was here. And then, of course, like any budget, as we go through the numbers, you're going to find that, you know, revenues have been dropping on a regular basis. So in order to get you a status quo budget, which is what I call this, is there's really nothing monumental here. We kind of keep everything about the same. In order to achieve that, you needed the cooperation of your department heads because when expenses go up and revenues are down, you know, there's really no magic. People have to work together to try to get some, something working that gets us through the year as viably as possible, but also collaboratively. So what we do with the department heads is we say, okay, we are all in the same boat together. You know, we're one city and we're one organization. Let's try to figure out how we can deal with your expense issues and your revenue issues and come out with a, 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 a process and a system and a result which is basically everybody's intact. And so I want to thank the department heads for working together. The process was collaborative. Uh, people really cared about your priorities, which I'd kind of like to talk a little bit about your budget philosophy because at the end of the day, this really isn't my budget. This is a, a result of uh, what you all said that you need and want and expect from the city. And so we'll do that. And then also, as we talk about the department heads and their cooperation, it's important to note that in order for us to have balanced our, our budget this year, the contribution made by all of the city employees in taking no salary increase this year for the second year in a row. And that is a very important part of this budget. And we should all recognize that as uh, part of the shared sacrifice here. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about your philosophies. First one, everybody said across the board, no millage rate increase this year. Now's not the time. The economy's uh, not, this is not the right time to be doing that. So this budget has no increase in the uh, mill rate. No reduction in city services. Now, I think everybody understands what the city does. Sometimes we don't do a great job of explaining to the public what we do, but the truth of the matter is, the services that we provide here, people uh, rely on. And when you turn that water on, people expect it to come on and the electricity and all the things that we do, you call the police, we expect them to be there. So a lot of city services, there are vital services and, um, and this budget does not do anything to diminish those services. As I mentioned, status quo. Not a tremendously ambitious budget in terms of increasing services, but again, with the economy the way it is, that's not what's in here. Status quo is, is really the mantra throughout this document. No increase in city fees. No increase in city fees is, uh, has been proposed. Uh, no layoffs. You know, we talk about bad economy. Well, we all have, you know, a uh, workforce here that we care about each and every person that works in this organization. And we try to feel everybody's concerns, and that includes our employees as well. So the fact that nobody lost their job or will lose their job with this, this document uh, is an important thing. And we appreciate your compassion for your workforce because they really work hard and, and want to uh, ensure uh, that your priorities are met. And then finally, uh, n preservation of the general fund reserves. And you have a, a, a policy that says 10% of your uh, expense budget needs to be maintained as emergency reserves. We have uh, in this uh, budget, we wanted to make sure that we didn't tinker with anything involving any of the reserves in general fund because as we think down the line, if there's any possibility of doing any bonding, your bond rating agencies look at your reserve funds. Typically, you know, the national standard says that between 5 to 15 percent of your, uh, your expense budget needs to be in reserves. And so it's a very important benchmark that they look at. They look at a whole slew of things in, in, in looking at your bond rating, but uh, general fund reserves are very important for them. And uh, so we haven't touched those at all. And so that's the philosophy. And that's uh, your priorities. And we've done everything we can to make sure that that happens. But it needs to be a real budget. And part of the difficulties with 
making uh, those uh, desires a reality is trying to match your revenues with your expenses, and that's always difficult. Now, the state law says, very simply, you can go up to 10.0 in millage rate. That's what you're allowed to do by law. They also have the formula for the roll back rate, but in an economy like this where the property values are down, we really call it a roll up rate, and that basically says that you can take you can take your millage rate up to the point where you have the exact same amount of dollars as you had the year before, and that is technically your rollback rate of 6.5610. Uh, what we're proposing is 6.2917, which means that you're going to be taking in less revenue on your ad valorem. That's the Florida law. Now let's look at really the problem that every government is having. Uh, obviously, Homestead is probably worse hit than many communities when you look at the actual values of the property. Now in 2008, your total property values were roughly $4 billion. By 2009, you took a 25% hit and went down to $2.986 billion. By 2010, you took another 31% hit they went down to $2 billion. And by 2011, you dropped another 8.7%, and now they're at 1.875 billion. So when you talk about trend line, that's extremely significant. And so the fact that you've been able to preserve most of what you have at this point with three years of that is, I mean, you got to look at your staff and you have to look at what you've been doing as a, a body and say, wow because there's plenty of other places that they're, they're suffering significantly. So the fact that we can even talk about status quo right now, I think we should all count our blessings. When we talk about that three-year period, we're talking about a 53% decrease in your evaluation. So very significant. How does that impact the ad valorem? Well, what we have here is 2009, you collected $16.7 million in revenue. Well, the next year, you went down to 14.4 million, a decrease of 2.3 million of 14%. Took another hit, $3.5 million, or 24% decrease. In 2012, we're now down to $10.2 million, and that represents a 39% decrease, or $6.5 million in lost revenues over that period of time. Some of the things, the challenges that local governments face, and I know all the department has when we talk about trying to meet expectations is people think, well, oh, their tax dollar goes to the local government, but it turns out not to be true. In fact, school board takes up a good portion of that, then the county takes another portion of that, then we have regional, and then finally, the city of Homestead, 27%, less than a third of the tax dollar goes to uh, funding city services. So it's really a small portion. And, and here's how you spend that $36.8 million. And this pie chart will kind of give you a, a general overview of where you're at with the revenue side of this. Good portion of it, majority of it, or the largest portion of it is your ad valorem taxes. Then we have the interfund transfers. And then we have the state shared revenues. And the, uh, probably the, the brightest light in this whole thing is that while the ad valorem has gone down, this is a, a year where we're starting to see the state revenues go up a little bit. So hopefully that's a sign that the state economy is improving. And then you have the other various uh, portions, licenses and permits, transfer fees, and uh, other uh, funds. So that's really the revenue side. As you can see, it's not particularly pretty. On the expense side, we had other challenges we needed to face, and this kind of represents the vast majority of the fixed increases that we needed to factor into the expense side of the budget. Uh, pension and health costs went up $660,000. Uh, two new city parks will be going online for almost $300,000 in cost. Street lighting and maintenance, about $170,000. Elections, it's a one-time cost, 158000 for this season. Uh, fuel, 151000 um, Computers, building improvements, step increases represent the balance of that for a total of $1.724 million. 
If you look at where that money goes, the $36.8 million, you kind of see how it breaks down. Now, the police have the largest portion, 57%, but please bear in mind that also includes code um, enforcement. Code enforcement. Yeah. Code, code compliance. Code compliance. I knew I had that wrong. I just wanted to make sure. Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> and then also we have some parks costs in there that we do, two, two parks. And the thing you should be aware of with the parks issues there's roughly $400,000 in expense for the maintenance of the parks. And at some point, which we're using the confiscation monies for, at some point we'll be out of confiscation monies. And so that's, an, that's a future cost that we're going to have to start factoring into the other departments. But right now, the money was there, so we figured let's fund, let's fund it status quo. And then uh, next year, well, it'll be just one of several items that we're going to be thinking through. Uh, and then the rest of the breakdown you can see is, is listed there on the chart. Uh, but the vast majority, 57 percent, is, uh, is uh, police and code compliance. Uh, total uh, enterprise funds, like police, electric utility is the largest portion of the enterprise funds budget. And uh, the vast majority of those costs are fuel costs. And so that's just the reality. Costs have not been, uh, hasn't been a pretty year for us with uh, fuel costs, but Hopefully next year we'll see that level off as well. And then of course water, wastewater, stormwater, solid waste, all there, and the uh, electric bond debt. All funds, $156 million. Enterprise funds represent 57% of that. With the general fund, really, if you look at it, and, you know how much of that really is, of the tax dollar. We saw that small sliver. Of that small sliver, 24%. Uh, the general fund is really a you know, very small sliver of that all funds budget. And so where does that leave us with this budget? Well, we have a, a total uh, general fund budget of $36.8 million, 5.4% increase. All funds, $156 million with a 1.23% total increase. And our millage rate remains the same with a 0% increase. And a um, couple of things, just philosophically, we talked about the cost for the, uh, the parks. There's a couple of other things we have to realize, and that is, and the city managers are supposed to give this speech, so I'm going to give it and forgive me for it, but the truth of the matter is there's no elected body here from here to California and back that want to raise taxes. They never want to raise taxes, and every year they say the same thing. And the truth of the matter is, if your expenses go up on a regular basis, and your revenues stay the same, or in our case, go down every year, at some point it's not a sustainable situation. So totally is understandable to say status quo, and this is a responsible status quo bu budget, and we can get through, and it's it, this budget will get you through next year, and I think over the next couple of years, the strategies that we're adopting, we can try to keep this thing as level as possible. But I think it's unrealistic to think five, the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, taxes are never going to go up, and we're never going to have any increases in revenues, and, and we're going to have the same amount of services. Because like everything else, pension costs go up and health care costs go up. So at some point, you know, we're going to have to have that discussion, but... I think status quo makes the most sense this year, but I throw that out on the table as the reality check for the future is all governments will face this, or you decide to re-engineer government and decide to do with less service, and that's certainly a, a, an option that you'll have in the future as well. But for now, I think everybody is very grateful for status quo. I think everybody understands. I haven't gotten many phone calls from staff saying, I want more of this and more of that. Everybody has tightened their belts as best as they can. And to you all as elected body, I appreciate you, know, you all not being overly ambitious as well because there really is not the money here this year for grandiosity. But hopefully, and I know you all want to move the city forward, you know, there's things we can discuss in the future. But that's the proposed budget, and uh, we have the departments already here to answer any questions if you have anything specific. And bear in mind, today is not the only opportunity. If, if any of you or the public have questions for us, feel free to give us a call, email, whatever people have. Uh, if they can want to come in and talk to us about the budget, we're happy to do that as well. So with that, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Council. Yeah, just a quick question. Sure. 
Um, with the new two new uh, city parks coming uh, operating costs, is that going to be per year, George? On this is yes, and anticipated going up every year. Correct. Okay. Further questions from the public? Go ahead. If I could, sir. Sure, please. Through the manager, I guess to the uh, utilities department. <clears throat> We, uh, the manager referred to the fuel costs being so high and that we we're looking to do something different for next year. Can you just share with us what the strategies are that we're looking to help us on, on those uh, fuel costs or, or what, uh, what the residents should be looking for as we move forward here? Other than we hope fuel goes down to $1.50 a gallon again. We have uh, Barbara is going to be uh, negotiating with the OPEC nations. This <laughs> Hopefully we'll Are we going to be drilling that last year? Or we, uh, if she's meeting with them in Dubai uh, next spring, hopefully we'll have something. <laughs> right now, I think what they're hoping for is that the prices are going to go down, and I think that's, that's really where we're at at this point, and we're also looking at some alternative. But Barbara, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Yes, we're we're hoping that the prices that we were quoted for for next year um, are not realized. Some of them, even for for coal powered generation, are much higher than what we're currently seeing, and we are hoping that um, those estimates are on the high side. And we we're also in some very very preliminary discussions. Um, looking at our own generation and how efficient the generation that we have on site here is and um, what the different options are for us moving forward. That um, would take a few years to realize even if we move forward tomorrow with, with something, which of course we're not doing. Um, it has to be vetted and discussed and shared with council. But we are looking at um, different options for reducing our, our fuel cost in the long term. As far as where we are now and next year, as the manager has stated, I will be talking with the OPEC nation. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just, uh, we're hoping that the costs that we were quoted were um, higher than they actually turn out to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Further questions? Sure. <coughs> Last year, we had to take money out of the general fund to budget the balance. I mean, um, balance no. the budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, I, I, I really commend the staff and, and you, Mr. Gus, because I don't know how you did it this year. Because last year, we were in much better shape than we were this year. So congratulations to your team. And congratulations to you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd also like to give kudos to staff and, and to the uh, the manager. Um, you know, we we uh, we held the line two years in a row now, and and we couldn't have done it without staff. And and staffs, uh, you know, giving up a lot of things that they deserve. You know, the the colas, the uh, the raises, uh, and and I appreciate what you've done for the citizens of Homestead. Uh, and I, I really believe that the state is going to be in better shape. I think our state revenue sharing will grow. I think that this governor, liked or not liked, I think he's going to do some wonderful things financially for this state. I think we're going to become uh, a very popular state again to visit. Um, and I just, uh, I really believe that the citizens of Homestead um, uh, are very, very pleased with, with the council and with you, the men and women who, who make things happen here in Homestead. Um, and if they weren't, I can tell you, two years ago, three years ago, I sat in this audience, and it was 75% full. And, and I see two, three people here tonight. And I hope and I believe truly in my heart that that's a good sign right there. That's a sign that they believe that they're in secure hands, that they believe that the staff and, and the management team here and the council are doing what they, what they uh, elected us to do and doing what we hired, uh, what the manager hired you all to do. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart and continue to keep up the good work. At this time, I'll open this to the public. Mayor, I did have a comment. Oh, sure. Thank you. I'm going to stick to giving credit to the city manager and his staff. And this presentation process, I mean, the budget process, I'm sorry, 
was very informative. Last year we were three or four votes up here from not passing the budget because we did not feel comfortable with what was presented to us and I think that I'm very confident not only in the numbers that were presented but in the job that was um, in forecasting what the future would hold. So thank you to the city manager. I'm, I'm going to hold the praise back a little bit because I know we have a review tonight. So, but you've done an excellent job and your staff has done an excellent job. Thank you. And, 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 and again, too, kudos to our enterprise fund. I mean, you know, I don't want to, to lean on that too hard, but I mean, kudos to our forefathers who, who were, were sharp enough to, to build a city really pretty well self-contained until we lost our fire department, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. But, um, you know, I say kudos to, to our forefathers uh, and every mayor hanging on the wall behind us in the, in the next room because they, they did a great job. There are a lot of cities, 34 municipalities, and I'm sure that there's 33 of them saying they wish they had half of what we had here in Homestead. So with that, um, if there's nothing from the general public, uh, I'll come back to council. Any final questions from council? Madam, we're going to vote on this uh, separately, correct? Yes, we're going to vote. Resolution for actually, actually, then the ordinance. Okay, we're, okay, we're going to actually vote uh, on the millage, right? Correct, right, that's the resolution. Okay, so we're going we're to vote on the resolution of the millage rate first. Madam Clerk? Excuse me, we did a motion on both. Motion to move it forward. I move to approve. Second. 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 Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk? Councilwoman Lobo? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Warman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now we're going to vote on the budget. First reading. Madam Clerk, a motion to move it on? Move it. Second. Second. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Warman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Lobo? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Okay, now this was the, uh, this, there'll be a second reading, and the second reading will take place on Wednesday, September 21st at 5.30 p.m. and here in the council chambers. Uh, uh, with that said, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And thank you for coming. <laughs>